Hi, I'm George Cow, and I'd like to tell you about my upcoming online course called Create Your Framework. So I have been in business for about 10 years, and in that time, I have created more than a dozen frameworks, probably dozens of frameworks, because each one of my online courses, it's itself a mini framework. And then there is a larger framework that encompasses that all the online courses fall under. I've also written four books and each one has its own framework. And of course they all fit into the overall umbrella as well. So let me actually first start by talking about why it's important for you to create your own framework if you have a message you want to share uh, in the world, if you have an authentic business that you want to build, you want to build a business where you can earn a livelihood doing what you love, why is it so important to create your own framework? Okay. So first of all, what is a framework? Let me explain that. And by, by I'm going to show you my screen and give you examples uh, of, of what a framework is. And then we're going to go into, um, into creating your own. So one of the most popular frameworks uh, on the internet, or not on the internet, it's on the internet, but one of the most popular frameworks in recent history is the Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. And that is a pyramid-shaped framework. And I'm gonna share my screen right now to show you. So you might recognize this Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. This starts with phys physiological needs and goes all the way up until esteem and self-actualization needs. So that's a, that's a popular framework for personal and sort of um, uh, development of human beings, right? Uh, another popular framework is, um, oh, this is a popular among some of my clients, the work of Byron Katie, and her framework is uh, more of a linear framework. It's a step-by-step, -step, you know, step one, step two, et cetera, right? So each step has, has particular, uh, is a particular practice. Right, so step one, and then and then step three has a sub framework called the four questions. So again, frameworks are kind of like nesting within each other. It's kind of like little Russian dolls. You have an umbrella framework, and then you have small frameworks underneath it. And so uh, you might have an overall framework that um, helps you to organize all of your ideas about how you work with clients or how you write or what kind of content you create, that's an overall framework. And then you have sub frameworks underneath that, one for each of your courses, one for each of your books. You may even have mini frameworks for a particular blog post, et cetera. Um, so that's a linear, so this is a, this is a pyramid framework. This is a, a linear framework. Let me show you a circular framework. So this is a circular framework, a pie shaped framework, which is called the coaching wheel. So a lot of life coaches use this with their clients. Uh, you know, as they meet with their clients, they'll, they'll, the clients will assess them or they'll help their clients assess themselves on, okay, from a scale of zero to 10, how satisfied are you with your business or your career on a scale of zero to 10? How satisfied are you with your the, the fun and recreation elements of your life or the health element of your life or the family and friends element or the romance, et cetera, personal growth. So this coaching wheel then helps um, the coach and the client see what they need to work on to then focus their, you know, their, their work together on, on certain aspects. So that's a circular, circular pie shaped framework. Um, let me show you now a, um, a grid framework. So this is another popular framework called the five love languages, which is something that I, a book I read many years ago, which really was helpful for me in my marriage. And not just in marriage, but also in friendships too, because according to uh, the author of this, this framework, Gary Chapman, uh, human beings, modern human beings have these five different ways that we receive and give love. And so this is a grid shaped framework because, uh, you know, and, and I would also call this an archetypal framework, meaning as a human being, you can place yourself in one of these five. And actually the way that the love languages work is that you have a primary love language and then you have a secondary love language, but you would place yourself say, oh, you know, I really, really get a lot out of someone giving me words of affirmation or, or for some people, um, like for my wife, that doesn't matter as much for her. It's much more important for receiving gifts and acts of service, right? For some people it's physical touch and or quality time. And then here's how to communicate, actions to take things to avoid. So that's a really interesting uh, grid-shaped framework. Now, I also want to show you 
I also, of course, have a framework for how I think about business. So let me show that to you now uh, on, on the screen. And this is the three stages for, for every authentic business. And I want to thank um, one of my viewers, uh, now clients and friends, Captain, for helping me create this graphic. Um, and this is how I think about how each authentic business grows. There's, there's stage one, which is audience building. Okay, you have to have some people to offer your product services to, right? Stage two is actually where you work together with your audience to understand and create the product or service or program that you would be offering them. That's really how you how you create a successful offering because otherwise most people they misunderstand business by saying, well, I'm going to create something in my garage and then I'm going to go and try to market that. And they find out after spending months or even years creating a product that the market doesn't want it. And I think it's much more productive to actually start out by spending you know, a few months creating a, a, an audience who really appreciates your content for who you are. You would be writing about things that are important to you, things that inspire you, and then noticing what is inspiring to them and then creating more. And then you create the offer, the product service in relationship to them. And then once that's successful, you then expand the marketing of that to, to the masses. And so, uh, so this is my overall kind of public framework for how I, how I think about business. Now, with regards to framework, you may have a public framework, which is what is, you know, what your potential clients and your clients work with and what you, what your audience understands of how you think about your area. But you might even also have a private framework, which is how you organize your information. It's a bit more detailed. Maybe it's not as understandable by the audience. And I'd like to show you uh, just a glimpse of what my what my private framework is, and I have it in a spreadsheet <laughs> because I find spreadsheets very easy to work with. You can do percentages, et cetera. And this is how I organize my content. And I will be sharing this tool uh, and teaching you how to use it in my upcoming course on Create Your Framework. Uh, so for example, this is how I organize my content. Here's all my content titles. Um, I'm not gonna walk through the entire thing right now, obviously, I'm just giving you a sense of it. But here are my, my here's my private framework, my various, this is more detailed, it's, it's more detailed than the three stages. And so there's creating content, there's joyful productivity, there's optimizing offerings, there's authentic selling, there's healthy money, and then there's um, authentic business principles. And the nice thing is I put all of my content in one of these six categories. And the great thing is that I can quickly see how many pieces of content I've created in each of these categories and what, might, what I might want to create more of. And when I'm ready to create a course or when I'm ready to create uh, a, a book on, let's say I'm, I'm, I'm writing my next book on joyful productivity or creating a course about it, I can simply sort the spreadsheet. And now I have all of my content pieces related to joyful productivity that I can create a course about or that I can write my, my book chapters on. So it's really useful to be able to organize, to have a framework, like I said, that then you can organize all of your content in. And then from your private framework, you would then create a public framework that makes more sense for the public, that's much more consumable by the public. So it's important as I've, hopefully, I, now I'm getting into the section now, now, but why is it important to create your own framework? So now you know one of the reasons to create it is that it helps you to organize all of your ideas. So the number one helps you organize all of your ideas into one umbrella and the different sections of it. Secondly, it helps you to organize the ideas that you're coming across online or offline as you are learning and researching and studying uh, your field. You could say, oh, okay, this additional piece of information or this additional uh, exercise, I would, I, I need to, I need to work this into my framework so that I can use it with my clients or so that I can write about it or so that I can expand on it. Okay, so it's really useful to be able to organize all of your internet research into these frame in, into your framework so that you know, okay, next time you want to expand on a particular place, you now have a place where you're storing all of your ideas. Uh, and in fact, what I'm going to show you is how do I store ideas um, when it comes to when it comes to my own uh, research. Okay, so I have uh, I use Google Drive, and again, I'm going to be walking you through how I do this in my course and, and teaching you and helping you uh, do it yourself. So basically I have a, a Google Drive folder uh, called workshops and this is how I organize all of my course content. And so the way I think about 
how my framework touches the world, how my framework is practical in the world, is that I teach courses related to each part of my framework. Okay. And so whenever I come across, um, uh, let's say book creation is one of the one of the, the courses I teach. That's part of my I didn't even show you my full framework. What I showed you here just was my content framework, but I have a I have a fuller framework, which is which is how I organize my courses. So there's various levels of how I think about framework. I'm going to talk you through that in the course itself so that you can organize it uh, however you want to. If that makes sense for you. So one of my courses is book creation. So in my Internet research, as I come across more information about book creation, book writing, book publishing, book marketing, I will then be able to go right into this this course and i have a notes about book creation okay i have a notes and that's where i'm going to put my additional information that i'm going to be integrating into my upcoming course about writing publishing marketing books as an example so i have i that's how i organize my my new information that gets woven into my framework and i'm, I'm going to talk about more about how you organize information using bookmarks and things like that, that will then weave into your future content inside the course. So why is it important? Number one, it's important for you to organize your information, for you to be able to know what's what holes are missing. Because once you organize the information, you go, oh, okay. I realize that now uh, my framework is missing this particular element. So do I want to create that element within my framework? Or do I want to say that I'm not going to focus on that in my framework, in my message, because all of us can only focus on a certain number of things. So there are, there are aspects of marketing for that, that I don't focus on, that I say, you know what, I'm going to let other people focus on that. So for example, marketing on Pinterest, that's, not, that's something I decided not to include in my framework. Or uh, doing in-person speaking, that's something I decided not to include in my framework, because I, I work with people who uh, want to be able to develop a successful online presence, whether or not they do in-person speaking, right? So, the, as you develop your framework, you're gonna you're gonna come across holes as you as you do your research that you can decide whether to add into your framework or to uh, develop partnerships with other people who are better at that. That you can then have a referral partnership to say this is my framework and that's your framework. I'm gonna refer you people who are better at uh, who need your framework. Okay. So another reason why it's important to have your framework is once besides knowledge management and information organization, very important reason is that it makes your work irreplaceable. It makes your work irreplaceable, okay? So I have known a lot of people, for example, over the years who have gotten trained in the work of Byron Katie. You know, a lot of my clients have been. But the thing about the work of Byron Katie is it's her framework, it's Byron Katie's framework, which means she's training thousands of people to use her framework. So if someone's gonna work with you, and then they come across somebody else who does the work of Byron Katie and they like that person's personality better, whatever, they'll just go and work with that other person. So having your framework, the thing is, even if you've been trained in other people's frameworks, you can still create your own framework. You can borrow bits and pieces from other people's framework to create your own framework that makes the most sense for you. Because the other thing you'll notice about frameworks is that no matter how much you study a framework, you'll always find that there are holes in it. You'll find that no framework is perfect. The holes, like the Byron Katie, I mean, I know there are a lot of fans, but as you study it, you might say, you know, I, I, would, have, I would have said that in a different way than Byron Katie, right? Or I, I would have done this exercise in a different way than Byron Katie, or I would have um, added a fifth question, or I've added a, a question between questions two and three that I find is useful for my clients or is useful for myself. So, as you look at other people's framework, I, I invite you to come to it from a, not a, from a critical point of view, but from a more, um, from a more open mind to say, hmm, how could I make this even better? Because you will be able to make it better. Nobody has the claim to truth. Nobody has the claim to truth, not even you, right? All of us, when it comes to truth, truth is ineffable. No one can pin down to say, I have the only truth and everybody in the whole world should only look at reality this way, okay? Truth is always evolving. The scientists, even with the scientific method, they're always coming across, oh, we thought the laws of physics were like this, but now that we're studying the universe, it's breaking our laws of physics. And now we're going into the quantum mechanics model and who knows what's after the quantum mechanics model. There's gonna be even more evolution, even, even in the laws of physics, 
Okay, so no one has a claim to truth. And someone can say, I'm going to take the quantum mechanics model and apply it to personal development. Yes, I'm not claiming that it's scientific, but I'm using parts of that I those ideas to, to, to talk about. And you've heard of quantum personal development, you know, the word quantum has come into various personal development methods because they're just borrowing bits of these ideas into their own framework. So as you create your own framework, it's going to become unique to you. Okay. And here's the thing, your audience that you're developing will resonate because you are building an authentic business and you've developed an audience who resonates with your personality, who resonates with your way of thinking, they're going to resonate more with your framework than with other people's frameworks. That's the definition of building an authentic audience through your own content, through authentic content. So you all might resonate more with the way I think about marketing and business than other people, right? So I create my own authentic framework that then you that I, then I can help you work through building a building a business. Does that make sense? So a framework makes your work irreplaceable. Now, some people might say, well, George, I'm concerned about creating a framework and publishing it because ideas change. I might do some more research that helps, that makes me realize, oh, parts of my framework are not as accurate. I would like to change it. Here's the thing. Audiences love updated frameworks. Okay. The Byron Katie framework has evolved over the years. She didn't come up with the, the, the complete framework as it stands today from day one. The, when, when she published her first book, it has evolved over the years. And I'm sure as she continues doing the work and as she has all these practice, all these audience members who do the work and give feedback, the framework might continue to evolve. Okay. Why not? Truth is ineffable. Okay. Personnel development, human beings are, are unlimited depths in terms of how we, how we grow. And how, so your audience will actually appreciate when you republish a second version or a third version or a fifth or 10th version of your framework. And every time you republish your framework and relaunch your framework, guess what? It's another opportunity for even more people to discover who you are. Because when you launch a framework or relaunch a framework or republish a framework, there's marketing buzz. You know, people will start sharing. People will get reminded about what your framework is and they'll start sharing with other people. So every single time, you relaunch your framework, it is an additional opportunity for you to, 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 to more and more people to get to know your way of thinking and how you work with people or, you know, by the way, a framework isn't just for people who work with clients. You can do a, you can create a framework for your, just for your own content. You want to write books? Great. You need a framework to put all of your ideas in and to, to know what kind of books you should be writing and maybe even in what sequential order makes more sense. So here's the thing. No matter where you are in your research and in your studies, here's, here's, here's the truth that I, I believe is true about you. You already have researched a lot. You've already learned a lot. You already have a lot of life experiences that can be put into your own unique framework. So I tell everybody, no matter how beginner, of they, beginner they are, start brainstorming your framework and start creating it right now. Okay. Because like I said, your framework's going to evolve. You're going to have multiple versions of your framework over your lifetime, probably dozens of versions over your lifetime. But if you start now, at least you start to have a skeleton to start putting your, the ideas that you're, you're coming across, the ideas you're thinking of. You can start putting into a skeleton and you'll start noticing what the holes are so you know what to do more research on. And you'll start to, as you start organizing ideas, you're going to start to be able to learn better. Okay, you're going to be able to learn better because then you can say everything I learn, it's either going to fit into my, my skeleton framework that I'm developing, or it's going to be evolving my framework to make it even better. You don't have to publish your framework in the first month that you create it, or even the first year that you create it. You can keep your framework private for now as it keeps evolving. And then once the evolution of your framework slows down, you, you're, you find, you find that you're, you're not changing it as often. You're not evolving it as often, then it's time to publish the first version of your framework because it's come to a plateau where you're like, you know, most of the ideas that are important to me, I can fit into this, this basic version one framework. And then, of course, maybe second year, third year, I'll republish a, a second version of the framework, which will then give me another marketing opportunity to have more people discover me. So frameworks help you organize your ideas 
even from the day one that you start studying a topic, start studying a topic, you start creating your own framework, okay? Borrowing, of course, liberally as much as you want from other people's frameworks until you have your own unique framework that you can publish and that doesn't look exactly like anybody else's. It's gonna be your own, you're gonna have your own words to it, right? Because it's the way you think about it, it's the way you talk about it. And you, as you have conversations, it's gonna evolve and it's gonna to come to a, a more static point at some point. And then it gets to really help you build your tribe, build your audience, build your community and build your products, your services and your programs, write your books, create your courses, create your videos, et cetera. So I hope that this is uh, interesting as to why it's important to create your own framework. I think if you have a message to get out there, if, you, if you're passionate about learning something and sharing a message in the world, you ought to have your own framework so that you can actually uh, benefit from the organizing, uh, uh, the organization of it, as well as the potential marketing opportunities if you choose to go in that direction. So let me see if, um, I wanna thank those of you who are joining me for this, this is a live video, so I'm, thanks those of you who are joining me. If you have any questions about the upcoming course uh, or about why it's important to create a framework, uh, please feel free to add your comments below the video and I look forward to responding there. So I hope to see you in the upcoming course. The, the link to join is uh, www.georgecow.com slash framework. So G-E-O-R-G-E, George, G-E-O-R-G-E-K-A-O, Cal, dot com, georgecal.com, slash framework is how you go and uh, register for that, for that next course. And whether or not you join the course live or not, it's going to be available as a recording and you'll be able to benefit from it as well as you're going to have, you're going to be, uh, whether you, you get it now or later, you're going to have access to a student directory of other people who are creating their frameworks. We're going to have a student journal where people are sharing what their frameworks are. So you can, you can really see what the different types of frameworks are. And, you know, I, I really welcome people to kind of borrow from each other because everybody's, everybody borrows from other people for myself included, everybody. There is no original idea under the sun anymore. We all either consciously or subconsciously borrow from other people's frameworks. But at the end of the day, we come up with our own unique one. At least it's slightly unique. And then before we publish it, we may wanna do a little bit of research on the way we language our framework to see if other people have language it exactly the same way. And if it's exactly the same way, we might wanna change that language a little bit um, so that we can have our own unique framework. So uh, check out the course, see if you're interested in it. Uh, I think it'll be very valuable for anybody who wants to develop their own knowledge and share their knowledge with the world. So until then, I hope to see you in the class. Take care.